So last week I did a video where I tried to circle jerk Affinity Photo in order to convince you that maybe you should switch from Adobe Photoshop over to Affinity Photo. And that would be great, but is everything always sunshine and roses with Affinity Photo? Not by a long shot. Let's go! What's going on everybody? My name is Dave Conrad and I'm an artist and designer based in Southern California and uh, that probably doesn't mean much to you. But hey, but I'm here to talk to you today about the things regarding Affinity Photo that maybe some other people are not going to tell you. Some of the things that frustrate the heck out of me and I'm um, just bringing them to light so that you understand that even though I did a pretty decent job of brown nosing the heck out of Affinity Photo last week, not everything is perfect over there. I mean, don't get me wrong, Affinity Photo is a fantastic program and I stand behind it 100%, but there are some things that they can change. There are definitely things in that program that they can adjust to make things just a little bit better in my opinion. Who am I though? I'm just one man, but if they're paying attention, awesome. If they're not paying attention, oh well. Some things that you should know about it before you go and make that jump. Maybe it's the thing that keeps you from it. Maybe it's the thing you'd be like me and you're just like, okay, whatever, That's I, I can deal with that. But we're not here to talk about why we're gonna talk about them. We're here to talk about them. So let's talk about them. Now before we begin, I wanna let you know that none of these things are in any kind of particular order. Some of these got, uh, some of these are important and some of these are a little less important. And I, I, I didn't really put them in any kind of order to make sense out of that. You're just gonna have to, you know, use your own judgment of what you feel is more important than others and yeah. Number one, RAM management. Sometimes using this app reminds me of the days when I was using Photoshop 3 and 4 where RAM management was a major, major issue where you needed to have some sort of attached scratch disk to your machine in order to just be able to process the things that are going on in there. That was the way Photoshop was back then and that's kind of how things are with Affinity Photo now. As I'm doing this, I get these like RAM management notifications from some of my other security software telling me, hey, you're almost out of RAM. Hey, you're gonna bounce. You're gonna break your machine if you don't cut it out. I, I just have to do old school stuff in order to make this new school software work a little bit better. Caveat to that is that my machine is older, right? I probably should have more RAM in my machine. I probably should upgrade my machine, but my machine is so much older that it probably, I just need a new machine. For the most part, it does okay. So when I do get a new machine, I might have to update this and say, yeah, it wasn't really their fault, it was mine. Number two, brushes sometimes just stop working. I don't know what it is, but sometimes they just, for some reason, they just don't work. I haven't been able to figure it out. Maybe it's a key that I touched. I can't figure it out and it's impossible to just like, to just troubleshoot it sometimes. Trying to paint on something and it just doesn't work. So I have to shut down the app, restart the app, and then it works fine. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a RAM issue, but things just stop working sometimes like that. And it's just like, it's a head scratcher. It's not a deal breaker, but sometimes it just makes me go like, what is going on? Number three, again, not a deal breaker, but definitely one of these things that just kind of irks me as a designer. Arial is the default font. I mean, what is this? Microsoft Office? Come on now, Affinity. Can you get a better default font? There are so many fonts that you could put as a default font. Why on earth would you pick Arial as the default font? Maybe there is a way that I can change the default font to something else, but I've looked at it, I've tried to figure it out, I couldn't figure it out. Serif, the people who own Affinity, and just Helvetica, I don't uh, Roboto from Google, figure something out because Arial sucks. I'm always having to switch to some other typeface because Arial is there and it's just one of those things like, how about just keeping it? Here's the thing. The one thing about Adobe Photoshop that I really liked is that it was holding on to the last typeface that you use. So if I'm in Adobe Photoshop and the last typeface that I'm using is Futura or Helvetica or Bodoni or whatever, the next time I go into it, that is the font that is loaded. That is the typeface that is loaded. That doesn't happen here in Affinity and it would be really cool because I use Helvetica a lot. Every time you see some sort of like cover image that's got a typeface in here, it's probably Helvetica Bold. It would just be kind of cool if Helvetica Bold was the default. Now, not everybody has Helvetica Bold, but I have Helvetica Bold, and so I would just like it to be there when I need it rather than having to navigate around that damn aerial. Whew, decompress. Whew. I don't know why that one irritates me the most. There's so many other things on this list that should make me more upset, but that one really gets to me. Number four, the channel's palette 
frustrates the heck out of me. Not quite as much as Arial, but still. In Adobe Photoshop, one of the things that I used to do on a pretty regular basis was I'd scan something in, I would draw like a little doodle or something like, let's say for instance, I wanted to take this little note right here and scan it in or take a photo of it and then bring it into Photoshop and then bring it into the channels palette and I could take that, I could basically reduce it down to a black and white image and then turn that into a channel and then make that a selection. Lickety split. It was super easy and it was something I did on a regular basis and I missed that. Here, on the screen in front of me is a pretty ironic image because if you go back to the, the old school Windows 95, I believe this was a thing where it was a tree on a on a hill or whatever. Anyway, I, I digress. So I go to the channels palette in Affinity Photo and let's just say that I wanna mess with this image and I wanna take my levels and I go, let's see, let's, uh, let's just go radical with the levels, just get a little crazy here. I want black and white, that's what I want, black and white. So I got a black and white image and I'm just messing with this a little bit. Let's just say I wanna pull that tree out of this landscape for whatever reason. So I have this image done like this. Normally I could go into my channels palette, I could create a channel out of this, I could reverse it out, and then I could use that reversed out image to create a selection that is all of those blacks or grays that are in this image right here. I don't know how to do that. Like I basically, I could, I could command and click the channel in Adobe Photoshop and it would happen. Here, I, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know. Like, I'm like, okay, so do I make a selection there? I'm like, I, it, it's selecting these things and it's showing me only the one view of the different colors and it's like, I don't know what the heck is going on. Long story short, the channels palette frustrates the hell out of me. Maybe I need to do a little bit more research, but I thought maybe it would be a little bit easier. Maybe there's some magic going on here that I'm not aware of yet, but right now, I, it makes me want to shoot myself in the face with a banana gun. Number five, protect alpha. That's what they call it in Affinity Photo. But here's the thing, uh, I didn't know where it was. Couldn't find it. Took me forever to find it. And what I'm talking about is like in Adobe Photoshop, what you could do is if you had something on a particular layer that was like on the layers palette, you click on your layer and there'd be this little tiny little checkbox. You click that and basically it would, I can't remember what they called in Photoshop, it's been so long. I can't remember what it was called, but you, you could make sure that that layer was, like, if you wanted to paint over it or whatever, it wouldn't go outside the bounds of whatever was on that layer. It was pretty cool and I liked it. And it was, and it should be applied to individual layers because maybe I wanna do it to one layer, but I don't wanna do it to the next layer on top of that or below that or whatever. Affinity Photo doesn't seem to think that's the way it should work. In fact, they don't seem to think you should see that out of the gate anywhere. And it took me for a well, it took me a long time to figure it out. I had to go to a numerous YouTube videos till I finally found it. Like, oh my gosh, it's called something different. Second, it's in a place that you would never find it ever if, unless you were actively looking for it. Granted, this is on my laptop, which is a 15-inch screen. And it is a retina display, but maybe, just maybe, my resolution doesn't uh, quite give me full screen access as some other screens might. When I get a new machine, maybe I'll figure that out. Right now, though, it doesn't work. And this is why. In order to find it, first, you have to select the brush tool. So if I wanna paint something, you have to select the brush tool or you can hit B because if you hit B multiple times, you'll get one of these other things, it doesn't matter. So I select the brush tool, I go over here to my brushes, I pick any brush at random, I change my size because maybe, just maybe, in this image that I just created here, I want to paint the, the black and white thing that I've got going on here, some sort of color like red. And if I do that right now, for some reason it paints white. Why is it painting white? So I think I may have figured out the brush thing that I was talking about, about how sometimes the brushes don't always necessarily work. Well, it might be because the channel palette doesn't seem to work the way I want it to either. And maybe when I mess up the channel palette, I mess up the brushes because it doesn't work the way it should. What it was is none, uh, like so for some reason, something wasn't selected over here in the channel palette and I just hit the refresh button, the little recycle thing and everything, and now it's working fine. Ugh, oh, Affinity, you gotta fix that. This layer right here, this pixel layer is these tree, is the tree. Now, if I want to paint on this right now and I wanted to just paint the tree in this pinkish magenta color, if I paint on it right now, I can't because I don't have the alpha lock. I don't have the save alpha. I don't have the, what do they call it? I don't have the protect alpha going on. And so I need to figure that out. Well, where is it? I don't know. It's not in the layers. Why isn't it anywhere? I got to find it. Where is it? Where could it possibly be, Dave? Let me show you. Go be on the brush. Go all the way across here to the right, past wet edges. I don't need wet edges. Go past wet edges 
Now, you would think that it would be maybe somewhere. No, see this double arrow right here? It's probably showing on other screens, but on mine, I have to click that and there it is. The one and only thing that's left on this palette is right there, hidden from plain view. So I have to click that and now I can paint. Now I can paint this thing. But now if I wanna go back and change a different layer and I just wanna paint like fully wherever I want on this guy, oh, I can't do that. I gotta go back over here and select unprotect alpha and then take that off like that. From a usability standpoint, that is in the wrong spot. Number six, smart objects. I don't even know where to begin with this. Maybe it's just because smart objects is an Adobe name and maybe uh, Affinity Photo has a different name for some of this stuff. I know that the shapes down here are technically, they're vector based, I suppose, and they are essentially protected, but it's not like if I click on this, it'll take me to the other object. So if I wanna import something else and then I wanna edit it, I wanna make sure that one stays clean, but the one I'm working on is editable. You know, like smart objects, if I want that to happen, uh, I'm not sure how to do it. So maybe I'm just a noob, maybe there's, maybe this is something I'm missing. If I am missing it, please go reach out to me in the comments and let me know. For all intents and purposes, I don't think it exists. I don't think it's there. And um, that's kind of frustrating and I hope they add that eventually. Again, this is a $50 program and not a hundreds of dollar program like Photoshop is. So, you know, uh, count your chickens. Take your blessings. Whatever idiom you want to use to say like, hey, just, to, just, just, just eat your oatmeal and be okay with it, Dave. Number seven, distort filters need work. Okay, so I'm on a layer, I select uh, filters and I go up to distort and I have these things that are just like, oh, I, like some of these, like wave and ripple and stuff like that work really well in Photoshop. And Photoshop has been the filter king for who knows how long. A lot of these work pretty good, but you know, not quite as well. For instance, like the twirl, you know, it, it I mean, I guess, I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of the same, but it's, the refinement is not quite there. It only goes a certain distance, right? I can't, I can't go any further than this. Normally in Photoshop, what I would do is I'd make a selection around something and the filter would adjust to whatever I selected, but it wouldn't matter here what I selected because it's only focusing its, its energy on that center point right there. What if I don't want that twirl right there? The ripple is a different one that I just like, like, I mean, okay, but there's like, so limited in the control. Photoshop does this so much better. Now what I do like is the Pixelate. I will say this, and again, I'm getting off topic here, but Pixelate's pretty cool. I like that. I don't mind that one. I was trying to use this deform and I was like, I don't even know what this does. Like, what, it, what is it actually doing? It doesn't even look like it's doing anything. What do I need to know about these filters to finally feel, like a fine? What does that mean? I don't even know what that means. Oh, oh, there we go, okay. Well, what, what purpose does that serve? I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just like sometimes some of these distort ones are just like, I don't even understand what the heck just happened there. Number eight, stock palette over here, unsplash, can sometimes be a bit buggy. Sometimes I'll be typing something, let's say dogs, like I did last time, and it's working now. It's working now because I'm trying to tell you that it's not gonna work. That's just trying to embarrass me. But sometimes when I do this and it's just like, nah, not gonna work, not this time, nah. I've decided no, and I'll, it'll just spin and spin and spin and spin and spin and spin. And I thought maybe it was my connectivity to the internet, but I tried that and it doesn't work. Sometimes it's just like, nah, not this time. Number nine, keyboard shortcuts. If you're any kind of professional designer, you know that you live and die by some of your keyboard shortcuts. You want your productivity to be up, 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 then you need your keyboard shortcuts. And most of the keyboard shortcuts work pretty well, but there's some that are just like, what? Why doesn't that, it's it's just, it's not the same. And you have to go up here and I think you go into the preferences and you figure out, where is it, preferences. Go up to preferences and there's something about keyboard shortcuts or whatever and you go through and you can figure it out. But it, it, it you have to do a lot of work to figure out what works and what doesn't. One of the ones that kind of frustrated me before, and this goes back to, well, this goes to something I'm gonna talk about number 10, was the transform tool, which you or the transform palette, where you just go Command T and automatically get a transform box like that and then you do all kinds of things, but depending on whether you're holding the command key, the option key, the shift key, the command option shift key, the command shift key, the option shift key, the option tilde key, whatever. You do different things 
by adjusting the things and putting things in a different place. Now, I, I do like that, you know, you can click on something and you've got a box around it and you can automatically just do this kind of like little wavy distort thing. That's kind of cool. And yes, of course, they've got the handles, which is something Photoshop doesn't have. So I give them that, right? But if I wanted to do perspective in Photoshop, I used to be able to do, well, no, I'm, okay, so I'm getting off track here. This is actually number 10. Uh, we'll go to back to number nine in a second. So the transform, it's just, it's just weird. It just doesn't, I mean, it, yes, it transforms, but then I got to go over here and select this thing and go to perspective and change that. I didn't know that that tool was down there. I had to figure that out. That's in the warp tool, but it's a perspective tool. So it's a separate tool. And if I still wanted to do, go back and say, oh, okay, apply that, but now I got to go and then, okay, so it works, but now I got to go and change the shift again. Whereas in Photoshop, I just have it all there and I can just quickly with my shortcut keys, move things around really easily. Since I jumped ahead and back and forth, we'll call number nine, the transform tool, ish perspective tool slash gah, pull my hair number 10 is keyboard shortcuts you know they're a thing and like i said productivity is a thing and if i'm not productive then i'm not making money and if i'm not making money then i'm gonna you know shoot myself in the face with a banana gun i'm i don't know if that's really i don't know if that would hurt or not but it wouldn't be fun especially if you're allergic to bananas i'm not allergic to bananas but i still wouldn't want one shot in my face you do certain key commands and they don't work like they want you got to go up there to the key the preferences fix your keyboards to do the thing i had to do this with uh, with the uh, reducing of like letting and and tracking in the in the type tools i had to fix that so that it worked like photoshop because it wasn't working at all like like it should in here so i had to go there and i had to make my own keyboard commands to represent that why on earth those things weren't actively available is beyond me because okay maybe it's photo it's a affinity photo and maybe just maybe uh, they're not thinking about type like other ones like designer or or publisher Maybe a photo is like well, it's photos. We don't really need as much control But really it should be universal it should be universal across them all and it should be readily available And it wasn't and I had to fix it you can fix it too if you're affinity photo there's probably no copyright infringement if you use the same keyboard shortcuts that Adobe is using. Why wouldn't you do that so that you could bring over more people from Adobe into Affinity and say, hey, we are just like them except better and cheaper. But they make it tough. They make it tough and I had to go and I had to go find the information because it's not a ton of information. I had to go into YouTube and watch a bunch of different videos to figure it out. Now hopefully I've answered some of the questions for you guys so that you can figure out and navigate your way around it any of these any of these 10 or 11 or 12 or however many I actually said none of these are a deal breaker none of these are anything that I would say ah, screw it I'm getting rid of a video I'm going back to Adobe none of those there every single one of them has been a workaround I figured out other ways to do my business and I'm, I'm doing okay would I like these other things to be incorporated sure absolutely especially that aerial thing get rid of that damn pawn please other than that I'm, I'm, I'm not going anywhere, Affinity. I still love you. I still am going to use you. I'm still going to go and promote you, even though you're not paying me a single dime for this. Whew. Anyway, it is hot in the studio today. It is hot in Southern California. I'm getting out of here because we don't have any air conditioning in the garage. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you like. If you have any questions about any of the things that I talked about, leave a comment below. I will make sure to interact with you. And if you have friends who might enjoy it, make sure you share it with them. Also, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe because subscribing is good and fun and great. And then if you have subscribed and you haven't hit the little bell, we'll do the bell. Bell, the bell is important. The bell is important because you want to know next time I talk about uh, ranty things like what works in Affinity Designer. I, that, that one's going to be a long way off because... I'm just not there yet. All right, folks, that's it. I've gone on way too long. This was supposed to be a short one, and of course it's not because I talk too long and, and I'm talking. And, and one too many bananas to the face. That's it, I'm out. Remember, folks, be good today, be better tomorrow. See ya. Why a banana gun? I don't know. It sounded funny at the time.